This is the websites.ca podcast where we help Canadian small businesses build and maintain an effective website and online presence. So we thought it would be topical to talk to everybody today about, um, well, first of all, some of the ways that we've seen our customers pivoting to relying more on an online model. So that means using their website, using their social media, their email list, and so on to make up for foot traffic, face-to-face business, and all sorts of other stuff that they would have done, uh, you know, outside of the whole COVID crisis thing. But greater than that, I I think this topic is not just about what's going on right now, but about how businesses can be more prepared sort of going forward into the future for the next crisis or the next thing, or just to be more efficient, how they can think about ways to, uh, to use their online presence a little bit more efficiently. And the most important thing here is uh, what we're not going to do today is we're not going to tell you to spend a bunch of money, change your entire business model, change the way you think about everything. We're going to try to think of sort of small, little efficient, affordable, actionable tips of how you can get online and, and do a little bit better. So shall we jump in, Ray? Let's jump in head first. So you were telling me in the last couple of weeks, you've been helping some people make some simple changes to their site. And uh, so maybe you could give us a couple examples and how we help them do that. Absolutely. So simplest thing that we've been doing in the last uh, couple of weeks is posting COVID related messaging on the homepage of small business websites. So some of our customers are closed. Some of our customers are semi open. And some of our customers are fully open for business and consumers out there don't know exactly who's open and who's closed. So our customers have been sending us little, little notes, little updates to say, Hey, we're, we're open during this time. Hey, we have reduced hours. Hey, we're only doing curbside pickups right now, for example. So that's one way that we've been helping our customers is with a one to two business day turnaround they send us an update, we get it added to their website so that they're keeping their customers informed to what's going on during this, during this crisis. And moreover into that, I think one of the things that um, uh, we've done that's, that's helped a, a small business is we've helped them to set up a curbside pickup order form on their website. So I'm sure everybody's heard this and seen about this. Tons of local businesses are pivoting their business to uh, deal with the current crisis and the current situation. Um, so this was an example of a of a small butcher shop um, that w- wasn't taking in store traffic anymore. Uh, so they wanted to set up a curbside pickup order form on their website. They wanted our advice. Simply put, we boiled down the top ten products that they sell the most, and we turned that into an online order form that their customers could go on the site and order chicken, beef, pork, etc. They're top sellers. Add it to, uh, choose your quantity, hit order, sends the email to our customer, uh, the, the butcher shop, and then the butcher shop can easily get in touch with the customer and set up the, the curbside pickup time. So that's something that many of our customers are, are pivoting their business right now to make sure that they can still make sales and do business during this time. And the website is one way to, to leverage that with, for example, a curbside pickup form. And so in other words, instead of taking two months to try to build out a whole e-commerce system and a shopping cart and a giant catalog and put every single thing they could potentially ever offer on there, What they did is in in one to two day turnaround, they nailed down their top, I guess what you say, three to five offers, right, Ryan? Absolutely. Yeah. And then, excuse me. And then um, kind of, again, instead of relying completely 100% on online, I assume they still did some phone communication with the customers, maybe put a little notice on their homepage and sort of did these little small things that led to not too much difference in the sales process for the customer side and also not too much uh, shaking up and changing in their internal business. Exactly. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that point up about going, you know, full steam into a full e-commerce solution because a lot of small businesses don't realize the, the complexity of going into, okay, add, I want my entire inventory in an add to cart functionality where people can pay and check out. Um, there's lots of examples of those out there, but it's, it's a time consuming, complex, 
uh, process to get that all up and rolling. Um, that's definitely not a one to two day turnaround. You're talking months for sure, maybe thousands of dollars. Um, so a simple actionable item is exactly that. Take a, take a step and put an online order form on the website, boiling down your most profitable items or your most popular items and l let people buy that right away. Even if it does take that extra step of you having to uh, call them for a payment or to arrange that delivery time. Um, during this time of isolation, I think that people really appreciate that human connection with people rather than just an email confirmation. So um, there's, there's that to consider. Yeah, for sure. That's right. Actually making sure they get on the phone is a nice way to stay connected with the customer that you can't see face to face. So exactly. we, over, we overlook these simple things. I was trying to think of, you know, what would I advise somebody that basically had no money and no time and, and wanted to incur the least amount of disruption to their business. Um, and, and this might seem, again, very obvious and simple to some people, but it's worth saying for the folks who overlooked it, you know, you can take payment via Interact. So you could just have your website company, if it's us, if it's someone else, whatever, if you can edit it yourself, you go onto the contact page, you put your email address and you put a simple one sentence instruction, you know, please send interact payments to this email address. Please use your, you know, put your invoice number or something in the comment line so we know who's paying, anything like that. That kind of update takes, you know, an hour or less. And now, and you know, everybody likes and trusts and knows how to use online interact payments. And that's another simple e-commerce alternative that doesn't take tons of time and effort and money to implement. Love it. Great idea. And like you said, every, almost everybody's accepting e-transfers as it is. They trust the system. So make it easy for people to pay you. And uh, that's one, one way to, to hit that nail right on the head. Uh, we were actually doing some spring cleaning over here, Ryan, and just to like listing stuff on Kijiji and, and Facebook marketplace and stuff like that. And I wasn't sure if anyone would want to buy, sell or, or interact in any way, uh, you know, in that method right now. But it turns out that, uh, you know, the item that I put online sold in about 10 minutes, the person paid through interact and pulled up, texted me the password, you know, got the payment, put the item down on the driveway. They picked it up. Everybody's happy. And it actually didn't change the interaction at all in any way. So, that's just a kind of a takeaway for our listeners to think about their customers too. You know, it might be a pain in the neck for you as a small business, or you might not want to make the change, but you got to think, you know, these, these people just want to do business with you. You kind of you pivot quickly and easily. You may maybe go back to normal in, in, a, in a couple of weeks or a month or wherever, but uh, it doesn't have to be that earth shattering or crazy to, to accept the difference. Completely agree with that, my friend. One other thing I wanted to bring up and mention is, the fact that a lot of our customers often struggle with uh, topics to write about, content to write about on their websites, content ideas. Well, right now, we there is a, a, a wealth of topics to talk about re concerning this COVID situation we're all we're all in. Um, so, and these are things that people want to hear about, believe it or not, like, especially if they have interest in your business or are a current customer, a potential customer, if you let them know how you guys are dealing with the situation, um, you know, what, what about your business practice has changed, um, updates to your website are important. And this is just an, an easy topic to talk about. And, and there's lots of examples out there of other businesses that have, I'm sure your, your inboxes are flooded with different COVID related messages from the provi uh, service providers or companies that you do business with. So you could look at some of those for some ideas and, and churn that into your own message that you could post on your website, on your blog, um, on your homepage uh, to better communicate with your customers. Totally. It's the, it's the gift that keeps on giving in terms of content. Like you say, most people just, they want to have a blog, they want to do updates, they want to post to social and they struggle with uh, sometimes motivation, but also just with knowing what to post about. Mm -hmm. And so now, you know, however your business is handling COVID, whatever is changing, like Ryan said, that's what you post about. That's what you write on your website. And uh, again, funny little anecdote. One of my clients uh, in marketing is a paralegal firm and their owner had been uh, emailing me and calling me every day. We have to do this update. We got to do this up to the site. We got to change this. The courthouse is changing the way they're working. We got to send an email. We got to do this and this and this. So we're helping them get that messaging across. At the same time, I was planning some of their social media content and the, the 
gal who handles their social media content call and said, man, I just don't know what to write about. And I said, are you kidding? Every day the, the boss is telling me all this stuff. <laughs> said, you should just be in on these meetings and then just say whatever he said. Go online and say what he did. And, and of course, again, when they're stuck in the middle of the storm, they don't think about that. Or they think, oh, that's boring. No one cares. Or, you know, oh, well, we have to tell some of our customers this, but it's not pertinent information. And that's kind of like, yeah, you'd be surprised, actually, how many people are, are um, very thankful that you're on the ball and you're still informing them. And so she immediately took that to heart and started doing video updates every morning. And again, maybe video updates is not the perfect example to put on your website. Um, would be a good idea for your social media content. But, uh, you know, whether it's a website or whether it's social media, it's just you're just reporting what's going on. And people will be very thankful for that. And I think, and Ryan, maybe you can corroborate this, but you said at the start of this podcast that a lot of people wanted to put updates on their homepage. Mm -hmm. and, and I was just kind of thinking, well, what's a nice way, what's a way to construct a website so that you wouldn't have to make too many changes to it and we could add the content and it would just kind of all integrate really nicely. Well, what we can do is we can put uh, a a blog post slider on your homepage. And what it'll do is it'll show the three or four or five or whatever, one or two, however many we decide to set, most recent posts. And again, the reason why we don't do this for a lot of businesses is because a lot of them have really struggled generating content. But right now, if you're doing daily content or weekly updates or what have you, we have that slider on your homepage. We put a post to your blog. Now it's visible in two places. You're really going out of your way to communicate with your customers. And it's, and again, you're not reinventing the wheel. Absolutely. Perfect. Uh, one of the other things that we wrote down, right, that we were going to talk about is, well, just we were joking a little bit, right? It's like, I, ne I, I never knew so many companies needed to be re reminded to wash their hands. <laughs> Okay. So there's this issue of, of authenticity. Um, you, obviously, it's kind of ironic, but you shouldn't have to fake authenticity. Uh, if you're a restaurant, I don't think you necessarily need to be reminding us that you wash your hands right now. I mean, maybe, maybe one post about it. But it's just like, you know, especially if you're a small business. You don't have to treat communication like you're some corporate a corporation, you know, that has to answer to a board of directors and has 65 lawyers breathing down their necks. You don't have to word things in a vague, ridiculous way that no one wants to read. Um, just say what's in your heart, say what your business is doing and say how you're helping your customers. I don't think it has to be any more difficult than that. Do you have any thoughts on that, Ryan? Well, my main thought is I can, I agree with you that it doesn't have to be more complicated than that. We don't need to, you don't need to bounce it off your lawyer and, uh, you know, ask everybody the, their opinions of, of it. You know, I think you hit, you hit the nail on the head again, speaking about, um, speaking from your heart, you know, tell people what's going on with your business. And, and, uh, if, if you have taken different precautions or steps because of this, let people know about that. They want to know, um, you know, it's, it's obviously this crisis is, is on the, f the front of everybody's minds and j you don't need to come up with a, uh, as you said, a stockholders, shareholders meeting type of, uh, document that is, uh, legally prepared. You know, it's, um, uh, people, this is a chance for, for every small business owner to be authentic and reach out and, and connect with their customers on a, on a different level. So, um, that I, I completely agree with. Yeah, let me tell you, you're not standing out at all when you're the 456,000th person to say, we are committed to doing our part to hashtag flatten the curve. Okay, <laughs> you, don't, you don't stand out saying the same thing everyone else says. Yes. If I go to the supermarket and they say, hey, listen, we're wiping down the conveyor belt or whatever the, the, the thing you put your food on. We're wiping that down in between each interaction. Don't worry about it. So just give us a second. And when they say it like that, it's like, oh, okay, I can infer from that that you care about my health and safety, that you care about your, your employees' health and safety, that there's some order, that you're asking us to consider some things. You know, you, you can infer that from that statement, but it's sort of a straightforward action statement about what you're doing and how it's helping me. Love it. I love it. Right. So uh, what about some kind of out of the box ways that people can use this uh, instead of being very doom and gloom about it, use this as an opportunity to maybe 
kickstart their marketing or, mm. or uh, grow and build a little bit? Have you been hearing anything or you have any ideas on that line? I do, which is now would be a great time if you haven't already implemented a list, an email marketing list, now would be a good time to consider building up a list. Put a, an opt-in or a pop-up on your website saying, we'll let you know when we're back to normal business. We'll keep you informed of what's going on in the meantime. Give us your email address. Having an email marketing list can have a massive amount of value depending on your business and industry. And if you don't have one yet, um, now's a great time to add that, add that feature into the website. Keep, in, keep informed, keep your customers informed, excuse me, with what's, what's going on at your business, how, how you're pivoting with what's going on and how you're going to be reopening as the you know, reopening uh, happens in, in each province. So yeah, exactly what a, we were talking about before too, is that the content practically writes itself. Practically writes itself. Exactly. Yeah. You know, your uh, city or province might be releasing information relative to um, the current situation. And you could be just regurgitating that information with your own spin or how that affects your business and what your plans are, you know? Um, so th this is a, an excellent opportunity to start to build that list um, because if somebody uh, really cares about your business, they're a, a repeat customer and you're closed right now or under limited hours they, and they want to do business with you, they, maybe they wouldn't have subscribed to your email list before, but I bet you they'd subscribe now because they want to know, you know when you're open again. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's a, uh, it's a really good opportunity as well. Once you get somebody on your list, you know, uh, you can take that, the daily content. I know a lot of, a lot of uh, our clients right now, Ryan, are just sort of, they're doing the best they can. So if they have less sales, if they have less time with the customers on the front line, it's giving them more time to go and rearrange stuff in the back end or take care of business. They otherwise wouldn't have had as much time to do. And so again, just documenting that talking about it, what seems mundane and, and ordinary to you as a business owner might actually end up being quite fascinating and interesting to your, mm. your clients. Uh, as long as you're kind of keeping in touch with them and telling them about how it relates to, you know, serving them in the future. So you could do that on an email list. You could do that on the, the blog of your website or your social media, like we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's also, I'd like to touch upon a mindset type of thing here. So I talk to a lot of small businesses that say, well, to go back to that example of the paralegal firm, every time they would send me a draft of an email to send out, the draft would say, oh, we're so sorry that we're bothering you again this week, but we have another update about COVID and I would cross the line up or cross the line out and say, you know, you're so lucky that we're keeping you informed about what's going on with COVID. Right. It was, a mind, it was a mindset issue with them. It's like, oh, we should never be emailing people. I said, why? You're help. You're being helpful. So the inclination right now, and I know lots of people are struggling, so I don't want to sound insensitive here, but uh, now is not the time to be needy in public. Now is not the time to apologize for your messaging. Now is not the time to maybe panic and start cutting, you know, cutting your prices drastically. Although again, I understand, you know, sometimes sales are really helpful, but I would caution people to go in the opposite direction. I would say you've kept a cool head. Your business is still afloat. Um, you know what you do is a service to some people and they want you to stay in business. So doing all these things that Ryan is saying is letting people know what's going on, when you're going to be reopened, what are the alternatives in the meantime. Um, I think that that reflects positively on you. And I don't think there's any reason to apologize or hold back or write less messages or sell any less hard during this time, because I think you're proving that you're going out of your way to keep things together for people in a tough time. So that's just a little mindset tip to think about. I'm with you there. Uh, one more thing. If you're not satisfied with your current website or the service you get from your provider, you can switch to websites.ca for free and get a great support team behind you. Just visit business.websites.ca. That's B-U-S-I-N-E-S-S dot websites.ca or email Ryan directly at R-Y-A-N at websites.ca. Ryan, appreciate it as always. The pleasure is all mine, Sean. Pleasure is all mine. Stay, stay safe. Wash those hands. Keep washing, stay safe. Thanks for listening, guys. Catch you next time.